Um, I'd like to welcome all of you here today and thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedules to join the uh, Children in Balance Fall River uh, Conference. My name is Bridget Juno and I come to you today from Tufts University. I work for the Children in Balance initiative there at the Friedman School for Nutrition. We are one of six cities in the country to have been awarded this grant. The other two who are the uh, implementation, the intervention cities, one is in Pennsylvania and one is in Florida. Um, it's a very interesting study in that the configurations of the three, although demographically are somewhat the same in terms of diversity and sizes of communities, um, the implementation is challenging for each of us in different ways depending upon uh, the setup of the, the program itself. The good news and bad news. The good news is I'm extraordinarily excited to be here to um, visit Fall River. I'm from Massachusetts. I live in Situate, but I do this kind of work all over the country. And it is much more fun to me to be able to do this work in what I would call my backyard, you know, to a neighbor community. So thank you for inviting me to do this. Take a second and think about your earliest fond recollection of having been physically active as a kid. All right, now think about it for a moment. Your earliest, by the way, I want you to go way back to as young as you can recall. And I want it to be a happy recollection, so not being chased by your older brother with a big <laughs> stick. Okay, that doesn't count. Yeah, she really saying, yeah, that was one, not that one. Something you like. And then just turn to a person next to you and share that recollection. Just all, let's take 30 seconds and do that right now. Go ahead. <laughs> Frozen. It could be ice, but it could have been swimming, it could have been playing in a pond or a creek, it could have been building snow forts. I mean, lots of kinds of ways water. How many remember a bicycle as a piece of your youthful physical activity? All right. Um, how many of you would say, if I were to gr grossly oversimplify this, would say your recollection is a recollection of, to some degree, having been a free-range kid? If I, I know that's a blast simplification, but look around the room. Everybody look around. Keep your hands up. Look around. This is the short version of the public health talk. We have a long version. This is the short version. 30, 25, 365. Anybody guess what 30 is? Anybody think about physical activity enough to know these recommendations? 30 minutes a day, of course. That's what the Surgeon General recommended in 1996. It was really reiterated just last summer in the new physical activity guidelines. 25, unfortunately, is the bad news. And that number is probably optimistic for a city like the Fall River. Leisure time physical activity. I'm going to the gym, going to the Y, working out, going for my run. 25. In lower income communities, lower income households, and households of lower educational level, the number is generally lower. Right? The two or the stronger correlates of insufficient physical activity are low income, low education level. The 365 must, of course, be what? Days in the year. Good guess, but you were hesitant because you knew I was setting you up because that's not what it is. It's much worse. Add three zeros in, you have an estimate of the number of premature deaths annually due to sedentary living and poor nutrition. Those two combined are second only to tobacco as premature killers of Americans at roughly 400,000 deaths. And here's the bad news. The trend line for physical inactivity and nutrition deaths is going up, while tobacco is finally plateauing and looks like it's coming down. When, this is a very simple study that tried to get people to just walk 40 minutes a day. That was their simple goal, 40 minutes a day. And in fact, they compared a few things. They told one group, walk your 40 minutes all at once. Break it into four 10-minute walks throughout the day, SB for short walks. Third group was told, you can break it into three, four 10-minute walks, and we're going to put a treadmill in your house. Long bouts, LB. One group was told you can, so you can jump on the treadmill anytime you want. Short bouts with treadmill, SBT. Now, the interesting thing is John Chakisik, who I think was actually in Rhode Island, the University of Rhode Island or Brown when he did this. Um, the interesting thing they did was, um, they did all the things that have been well established to get people to exercise more. So they set up walking groups and they sent them email and telephone reminders and they gave them an exercise log. Right? Like we do a lot of work site programs. And then they said, fill in the log, and every month that you turn it in, it was a six month intervention, we'll give you a prize. Because that's what we do in public health. We give out prizes, like t shirts and water bottles, right? How many of you are aware of a wellness program in which there have been a t shirt or a water bottle as a prize? Hands up for that. Of course you have. We've all received or given, if you're one of the people like me that does these things, right, Bridget? So we give out t-shirts and water bottles. And these t-shirt and water bottle interventions work, by the way. Over the six-month intervention period, all three groups increased their exercise minutes per week. They were walking more. That's not really the interesting question. I'm back to the question that Lynn and I opened the dialogue with here, which is what happens after the fact at the population level? Interventions over, researchers go home, and to John's credit, they asked this question, they followed up. 
Do you think, on average, people continued to increase their exercise minutes? Did it plateau or did they drop off for the group as a trend? And before you vote, I'm going to tell you two important things. At the six-month point, they had shown statistically significant increases in aerobic fitness and decreases in weight. They had been walking enough, and for a long enough time, they were getting fitter and losing weight. Everybody got it? Okay, now everybody here vote for one of the three arrows. How many believe, on average, because of their success, they continue to increase their exercise minutes per week? How many believe that on average, at least they maintained their level? They'd gotten enough success, they knew it worked, and they stayed with it. Excellent. Very good. And then if some people dropped off, others increased, so it averaged out. How many of you believe that on average, the group dropped off? There were a few hands that haven't gone up yet. Well, you guys are losers, and you have to all leave. And you have to pay for breakfast. No free breakfast for you. I should cast you out all but for one thing. You're right. I think you need to think about the three Ps. Not just the program. The programs are the easy stuff. That's what we in public health tend to want to do. Urge behavior change. Educate. Outreach. Programs. T-shirts and water bottles. Not knocking them. They're a part of the menu. They're a third. Okay. You also need to change the physical environment and, frankly, the policy environment so that the other outcomes become the norm. And I don't want to have to go fight and fix one sidewalk piece at a time. I want the policy to say, we only build high-quality sidewalks everywhere that connect to all destinations, but especially around schools and senior housing and um, shopping destinations, right? I don't want to have to fight to get a bike lane in place. I want the roadway standards, ideally, of Fall River to say, any time and every time we can, we try to put in a bike lane. if you aren't cleaning your sidewalk and have to pay a fine. The two versions that there's not a nickel spent by the municipality. Citing people for not doing it and or simply creating a pool where you connect willing shovelers with of homeowners and willing property payers. owners. What? Willing payers. Willing payers, <laughs> yeah. Shovelies. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I put that on the list. To me, you know, that sort of, the virtual stuff is the cheapest and you do it tomorrow. That's on the six-month list. Remember I said have some low-hanging fruit? Next winter, have an alternative snow clearing or sort of an enhanced snow clearing program in place. We do some enhanced enforcement. You do a media, a little bit of media news on the front end of the winter. Remember this year, we're going to keep the sidewalks clear, right? We're going to, because we're a walkable city. By the way, some of this is all about attitude. We're going to be a healthy, active, sticky city for walking. Here's how